Hi there, my friend. Today, we are going to look into the Agile principle number 12. It is the final one in our list of Agile principles. It is by far my favorite, and I know I'm not alone in that. Many people really enjoy this principle. And like many of the Agile principles, it's a very misunderstood one. So in our usual manner, we're going to get into this video dissecting this principle a little bit. And without further ado, let's do it. The Agile principle number 12 is the one that says, at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Continuous improvement feels like something you hear a lot about, but I wonder, despite how much talk, what is the percentage of it that is really implemented or absorbed? So as stated in the principle, we then look into three parts of it. One, regular intervals. Two, making time for it. And three, learning and adjusting. So if we start with the first one, regular intervals. This notion of regular intervals is a very interesting one because you should be learning as you go all the time. After an event just happened, release that fail, a book launch that didn't get you the numbers that you wanted, the beta app that you put up there and just went viral. Yes, you can learn from successes as well. But if you consider long and eventful stretches of time, you might be tempted to ignore what's hiding behind all that perceived normalcy. Your team might be doing something that's very positive or something more on the negative side that's now compounding. So if you regularly inspect what your team is doing, you can potentially catch all that thing that's happening before they snowball into something really bad. Or you could double down in whatever is winning. Another thing that you can see is that it creates a cadence, a rhythm, and that helps with making the learning habitual. Habitual means that, you know, there is a ritual, there is a habit now behind things. And if you really look closely, rhythm, cadence is very natural in businesses, you know, operating quarterly and annually. And if you want to really stretch it, even nature shows up in a way with seasonality, with periods of something that is regular. So a cadence is actually not something to be ignored and you can use that in your favor and you should. Time for reflections. If you need to reflect, you're going to need at least two things. You need time, you need data. Yet how many people, let alone teams that they belong to and their managers and departments will really find time to stop and assess how things are doing when you consider their busy bee work schedule. Not many people, right? Yet stopping, making time is something that you would need. Mindless execution and continuous delivery of unwanted stuff is wasteful in time, in money, and in opportunities. But there is another problem also related to this Agile principle number 12 that I believe has strongly to do with why people don't find time to do proper retrospectives. And that is data. Without data, the retrospectives can easily become a chat about perception and about feelings, which don't get me wrong, especially feelings, they are important, but they are part of the story, only part of it. And they tell a very personal story and not everybody wants to talk about their feelings all the time anyway. Data, on the other hand, will bring the missing part to the, the story that we want to tell. And it's more connected to the reality without any interpretation of facts. So data helps you ground the discussion beyond ego, beyond personal bias. And my personal favorite, data can actually help unite the teams, depending on you're bringing into the retrospective. Data will definitely help you filter out the noise. So to recap, without data and without finding time, what you see is the proliferation of these types of pictures and memes out there asking if you are too busy to improve and if you have no time to stop and to improve. Do you recognize any of them? Tuning and adjusting. And this is the true learning part of the Agile principle number 12, adjusting. Learning is creating change. If you pick up a book, for example, and you say you read it and you say, I learned. No, you didn't. If nothing changed in how you think, in consequence, how you act based on how you now think, then you did not learn anything. You might have acquired the information that was in the book, but you did not learn. 
And I mentioned this because very similar things are happening right now in your team, in your organization. And what is that? Maybe every two weeks or quarterly information is being presented. People are there looking at things, but nobody is actually interacting and asking questions. Nothing really is happening so much that you know, things don't necessarily get discussed as in what will be different from now on. It is not just about, oh, I think this could be then different. No, no, no. It really is about looking and deciding and committing to certain change that you believe has a certain positive correlation moving forward, a certain change in the process, adding someone else from another department into the conversation and so on and so forth. And without getting so much into the details, but if you want to read a little bit more about this, I go into a little bit more of details in the blog post. You can read it, just look in the description of this video and you'll find it there. But the other aspect that I wanna mention is that a lot of people mention moving into agile, get this agile thing in the name of innovation. And that is true that agile is very conducive to creating innovation, yet innovation being a sought after trait, it is misunderstood as some sort of inspiration and the muse. And the reality is that a lot of beneficial things comes from compounding changes and even disrupting changes. Sometimes they come from slowly uncovering things that could be done differently. So if you regularly inspect yourself as in making the time, using the data and learning and moving forward, adjusting something that you do and how you do it, then you're making yourself way more primed for reaching some level of innovation in whatever your teams and your whole organization does. We could talk for days about this Agile principle. Like I said, it's my favorite and maybe it's yours too. But I think the main point that I'd love for you to leave with is that if you've been an Agile coach, a team coach, a Scrum Master for a while now, I think you can appreciate what's truly behind this principle, how much this is actually at the heart of what Agile, adaptive, adjusting, flexible ways of working really mean. And if you think about it, how many organizations are currently stuck in their ways of thinking while just trying to adapt all the time their ways of doing. So there is a disconnect in there. So just a quick thing that I want to mention here is the uh, learning loops that sometimes people don't mention enough. But when we really talk about retrospectives and feedback loops, what we're really hoping to see is that we can adjust what we do. We can adjust how we do it and we can adjust how we think about what we do. And there's a lot of theory behind that. But the whole point that I want to bring is that when we're talking about Agile, we really want to cover all these aspects and it will get there eventually. Maybe you can't start already uh, shattering all the ways of thinking in your current organization, but it is important to learn and to never lose sight that you can't bring very interesting positive change by thinking exactly how you've always thought. So if you can't really admit a shift in the thinking, you know right away that your agility, whatever you want to call it, will be very slow paced and at some point will stall a little bit until you, your team, and whoever is following you in this journey will feel a little bit more open in how they think and the things that they believe are possible. So that's the Agile Principle 12 in a nutshell. That's what I wanted to share with you. Now over to you. Let me know in the comments if there's some question, if there is something that you were hoping I would address with this principle and you were surprised of not hearing, or maybe the other way around, you heard something and you got surprised that I touched that point. I'd love to know and I always answer. And that reminds me that if you didn't know, I do have a newsletter called The Agile Circle and it goes off bi-monthly, so just twice a month. And you know, even though it's only twice a month, it's full of stuff that nobody else is talking out there. It's obviously about all things agile from planning to retrospectives, but I also add a lot of elements of facilitation and coaching and leadership and a lot of other skills that are harder to master. And there's not much conversation going around and I deliver that directly to your inbox and we can always start a conversation from there. So the link is here here in the description and I hope you join. In any case, this video ends here. Here is the playlist where you can find all the principles all together and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now, my friend.